was the difference between pretreatment and follow-up. Suicidal ideation does change, but it actually takes until follow-up to see uh, the difference. And it's p equal 0 0.007 with a Cochrane's q. It's actually a chi-square value, 7.364. Now, what I would probably do in practice is I would, if I were writing this up, I would say that I did a Cochrane's Q analysis on the first three levels, and then I got a significant result, and then I followed up with a series of McNamara chi-square uh, analyses. But I would do Cochrane's Q, and I just wouldn't tell anybody. I would just do the Cochrane's Qs, and I would report these values, 7.36, but I would pretend, I would just call it a McNamara chi-square statistic, which is what it is. I wouldn't say I did a follow-up of Cochrane's Qs. You might confuse people thinking, you only have two levels. Why would you do Cochrane's Q? People just don't know that it works completely fine with two levels, and it works beyond le two levels. Like I said, McNamara chi-square should just not even exist anymore. Cochrane's Q uh, does everything. I think the last thing I would do is I would look at correlations between my levels as well. So just the bivariate correlations between these treatments. Because it's a within subjects uh, design, you should see positive correlations uh, across your levels. And that's what's observed here. And that's why Cochrane's Q works in a sense, is that it takes into account the correlations across time. And so pre-treatment and post-treatment, there's a correlation. Somebody who was uh, experiencing suicidal ideation or thoughts or inclinations at pre-treatment were more likely to observe experience or report those uh, inclinations at post-treatment. The correlation drops a lot, though. By the time you get to follow-up, the correlation is dropping because so many people are not experiencing suicidal ideation anymore. But you'd want to see that. I think it's important in the analysis to look at the correlations. You'll want to see something, uh, a positive correlation. So that's how you do a Cochrane's Q analysis in SPSF, SPSS. Follow it up with a series of Cochrane's Qs. In this case here, I only had three levels, so I didn't do any Bonferroni correction. I think that's justified based on the simulation research with Fisher's LSD. If you look at my video on Fisher's LSD, uh, I'll show you. I do have a video on how it actually works when you do an ANOVA first and only have three groups. I would very strongly expect the same uh, result here that you don't have to do Bonferroni if you only have three levels and you do a omnibus statistic first and it's significant. Now if I had four levels then I would have to start thinking about how I'm going to protect my family YZR rate increasing by doing follow-up tests and that might be a Bonferroni correction. You don't have a lot of options here. So I hope you found this uh, video useful. It's a good little statistic and like I said maybe we should never ever do a McNamara chi-square again.